Hello, people. So today I want to talk about an issue that's near and dear to my heart. And I, well, actually, uh, actually quite the opposite. I want to talk to you about something that I've, that I've hated for so long, something that I really uh, never liked, and that's networking, i.e. face-to-face networking. And I've really been, uh, I, I never felt comfortable with this. I never liked it. I've always tried to find, in a way, what I do working online is a way so, you know, of, of, have, of not having to network and, uh, and do all this face-to-face stuff. And I've found pretty much every excuse in the book not to attend these events. And when I do attend these events and it's awkward, it sticks with me, the awkwardness of it. And every time I want to go to another event, you know, I remember how awkward it was, how I didn't get any contacts from it. And so I should never go again. And I've literally come up with so many excuses not to go. Uh, I mean, I've had, in fact, for a while, what I would do is sign up for these networking events. And when it came time to go, I really didn't want to go. So I tell myself, oh, I could go to an event and probably not get anything out of it. Or since I feel guilty not going, I'm going to work extra hard on my other stuff now and that'll be better than going to the event. Basically, I'd find any excuse I could not to go to these events. But at a certain point, I had to realize that, you know, it was time to suck it up and actually go to these events because you have to. No matter what you're doing, if you're an entrepreneur, if you're a freelancer, you need to meet people face to face. And in a way, if you're working online, you know, especially if you're working online and you don't get to meet people face to face, your competition is a lot of other people like you who maybe don't like meeting people face to face and don't like doing that. So it's a way to get a step up and uh, and to kind of stick out from the crowd if you do go to these events and you have to go. So because of all these issues that I've had doing it, I've created basically notes for myself of what to do. And, you know, every time I some, come across something good, I can, I just jot it down because otherwise I, I won't remember so I can use it for the next event. And so what I have now are kind of step-by-step notes that um, uh, th- that I apply. And uh, they're sort of in chronological order what to do like before the event, during the event, after, everything like that. So that's how I'm going to go through them now. And hopefully you can find them useful. And so without any further ado, let's start going through these. These are my step-by-step uh, tips and tricks. I'll come up with a better title later. Anyway, step-by-step instructions, if you will, to uh, networking, to face-to-face networking. So let's start off. First of all, first of all, how to pick which events to go to. Um, And this was always an issue for me because I'm trying to go to the ones with a lot of people because there's more chance I'll meet someone. But then again, it just ends up being a crowd of people and you exchange a couple business cards here and there. And then I don't know, that's it. You don't get to talk to anyone in depth. So in essence, my recommendation for you, and this is what I do myself, is I try to find ones I'm comfortable with. I try to find ones if there's something I'm interested in. So I'm here in the States, but I'm from Switzerland. I speak Italian. Uh, I lived in Taiwan. If I find stuff that have to do with this or languages in general, then that's something I'm interested in. If I find, I don't know, anything else that I'm interested in, and, and it can change, you know, sometimes when the weather's nice, I like to go hiking or maybe it might be restaurants or something like that. If it's something that piques my interest, then that's probably something good. And so same with you. If you go through these events and try to see if there's something good. Now, I have another video, by the way, where I list where you can meet people face to face. Some of the basics are meetup.com and another one is internations.org. Otherwise, you can just look in your area of the Chamber of Commerce or whoever is having meetings. It depends what you're looking for, really. Uh, Meetup.com is pretty much probably the safest in terms of finding something in your area. So be sure to check that out. And then, yeah, so once again, find something you're comfortable with and, uh, and so that you feel more at ease. Because even if you have fewer people going or it's not really related to your work, it doesn't matter. For now, that's what you want, something that you'll go to. Also find something convenient because it could be something you're comfortable with, but it's you know an hour outside of town or half an hour even, you know, you're gonna have to drive there after work. You know, you're gonna find every excuse not to go there. And, uh, and you know, it starts raining, there's traffic, there, anything like that, and you won't go. So find something that's convenient uh, that you can get to quickly as well, because again, you wanna maximize the chance that you'll go. You, you want to choose things you'll actually go to. Um, at the beginning, I wouldn't concentrate too much on how many people are going. Uh, you can do that later. It, it, look, if it makes you feel more comfortable, then yeah. You know, if there's a safety in numbers, then yeah. On the other hand, if it's something you're interested in, if they're discussing Harry Potter books and you're really into Harry Potter books and only two people are going, all the better, right? Because then you'll have 
three people and you'll, you know, you won't just be stuck there an anonymous person with 50 people, but it'll be three of you actually talking about Harry Potter and you'll actually make two real contacts. So evaluate for yourself what works best. My one recommendation will be don't find too many of these, at least at the beginning. Find one or two that you want to attend and that's it. And then later reevaluate, you know, next week or after these events. Um, but you know, don't, don't find like 10 different events you're going to attend during the next week because you won't attend them and you'll just feel overwhelmed and it, it'll be too much. You won't want to deal with that. So that's in terms of finding places to go. Um, then once you've found these meetups or whatever events that you want to attend, the next step is the preparation. So like I said, I get pretty paranoid about this and this might seem like too much to you, but this is what I went through. So this, these are my recommendations once again, to you, once again to you. I'm just getting them these from my notes, by the way. First of all, is how to get dressed. Many times I sign up for an event and I don't know if with entrepreneurs, do they want to be in t-shirt and be kind of more hipsterish or are they more serious and maybe everyone's in a suit and tie, in which case I don't want to be the only one in t-shirt and stuff like that. What I've done is usually for all these events, you'll find pictures of past events, whether on the website of the organizer or on the website of the event itself. Meetup.com is great because they always show pictures, intonations, stuff like that. And so you can kind of get an idea. And that usually I just look at that and get an idea. Um, if I have to evaluate, I have evaluate with the upper half. Like if I see some people in t-shirts, some people in blazer and shirt and, uh, and stuff like that, I try to go a bit higher, you know, a bit on the top half, you know, not higher than anyone else, but it's better to be a bit too overdressed and a bit too underdressed, if that makes sense. So you see people in t-shirts and some other people in a collared shirt with a blazer, at least wear a collared shirt, you know, be on the upper half of that. Um, and then what else? Timing. Uh, so for timing, I usually, because uh, I, I used to get paranoid about finding a place and being there on time. Turns out anytime they have an event, if it starts at 530, people will start trickling in around six. So shoot to arrive around six. Now this is different if there's a speaker or a lunch or anything that has to start on schedule. If someone's speaking at 1 p.m., you need to be there before one. Usually they'll say to be there by 12.30 if someone's speaking at one because they'll say networking for 20 minutes and then we'll go into the speaker's lounge and blah, blah, blah. So if that's the case, be there by 12.30 um, or you know 12.40 if you want, but you wanna give enough time, A, to talk to people before you get in and B, to be there by the event. If you arrive after one, they're not gonna let you in probably, in which case it's a wasted, uh, you probably forfeited whatever you paid for it and you definitely wasted your time. So uh, that's the only thing about timing really. Uh, you don't have to be on time uh, except for specific circumstances. The next is to set a goal. And so this is what I've been doing. Usually it'll be something like you wanna make five contacts in one meeting or one really good contact or something along those lines. You probably won't stick specifically to that goal, but at least it gives you something in the background to be shooting for. And uh, you can adjust this goal as you go along. It'll depend on what you want. And it can be something tangible, like I want five business cards by the time I leave. You know, and this might not make much sense because business cards could be anything, but it'll give you something. In the meantime, you out of those five business cards, one person will be interesting or anyway, it gives you something to shoot for. So I usually think it's best to at least have some sort of goal for when you go, um, whatever it might be. Another tip, take a pen, have a pen handy before you go, just cause, you know, many times you'll meet someone and you'll want to write a note on the back of a business card or you'll want to write, want to write your personal phone number on a business card or I don't know, something like that. Just have a pen handy. It, it'll come in handy. So remember to bring one. Um, and the only other thing in terms of preparation is to research the type of event. Certain types of event require certain things. If you go to a networking event, you're going to have to get up and present yourself, you know, in two or three sentences, but you're going to have to have something ready. If you go to other events, uh, sometimes they require you to find a contact. And so just research what type of event it is. It, if it's a speaker, see what type of speaker it is. Recently, I went to a speaker, a guy who was talking about Russia and, you know, people were asking me, they're like, so why are you here? Are you interested in Russia? Stuff like that. You want to, you don't want to be caught completely, you know, out of the blue with no answer. So research the type of event just so you kind of know what's going on. Um, and you know, again, if you're going to a Harry Potter event, presumably you're interested in Harry Potter along those lines. So that's it in terms of preparation. Um, so let's see where we are in time. I might have to divide this up, but anyway, uh, we'll, we'll let's keep going. Uh, uh, another thing is once you get there. Now there are a couple things 
to do once you get there. One person uh, explained this strategy to me, and I kind of like it depending on the event. If it's an event with a lot of people, he called it the baseball diamond strategy, where you get in, and so as soon as you get in, and I kind of like this actually, if, if you're going to a place where you know nobody, and it's a lot of people, treat it like a baseball diamond. For those of you who aren't familiar with baseball, once you get in, um, or if you're standing on home base, then you have, for, sorry, home plate, home base. I'm not very good at baseball either. Anyway, if you're standing on home, then you have first base, second base, third base. If you're entering, it'll be first base, second base, third base. Sorry, I'm facing you, so it's mirror image. But um, anyway, it just gives you an idea. And so he said what he does is goes first to first base, and that's where he shoots for. That's his target. And he goes up there and figures out the situation there. And I'll get into it later about how to meet people and talk to them. But here I'm just talking about the overall strategy. Then once you're done there, talk to one person, five minutes, whatever it might be. Then you go to second base. After second base, you go to third base. And, and then after that, you go to, at least for me, you know, because I kind of like that for a big event. And then after that, I'll head to the food or bar section. Because the food or bar section, first of all, by that point, I'll want a drink or something to eat, presumably. And I don't like going there right away because then it kind of, I don't know, because once you're there, you, you've got nothing else to do. So first I try to meet people and then I go to the food or bar section. Good thing about going there is people are always there. So if I can find a way to hang out close to there, maybe start talking to someone, set my stuff close by, then I'm going to constantly have people revolving. So it puts me in a good position to talk to other people. Um, so that's the overall strategy and, uh, and next we'll talk in terms of strategy of actually meeting people, but I think I'm going to divide the, the, uh, video, stop the video for now and, uh, and continue next time and about networking. And so there'll be a part two. Anyway, that's it for part one. And I hope you found this useful and, and don't forget to watch part two. I'll link to it once it's up and ready. And if you found this useful, please don't forget to click thumbs up because that helps me know what's useful and what isn't. And feel free to comment with any strategies you might have because I'm curious to hear about them. And that's it. I'll see you in the next video where we have part two about networking face-to-face. -face. Thanks. Bye.